This is going to be a video on how to change the oil and filter on a 94 to 2001 Acura Integra. Okay, to do the oil change on your car, these are the supplies you're going to need. First, we'll start here. We'll need some rags, clean rags, some latex gloves, a funnel, a uh, permanent marker, some oil. Uh, the oil, uh, you typically want 5W30. If you can't find 5W30, 10W30 will also work. The 5W30 will give you slightly better gas mileage, though I don't know how much that will affect your pocketbook. Uh, you'll need an oil filter to fit your car. You'll need a oil filter cap wrench here that fits the particular oil filter that you choose. You can find these at auto parts stores. Um, this one happens to be a CTA A257. This fits um, filters with the um, larger flutes on the sides here. This is a OEM 25400. It fits uh, filters with the uh, smaller flutes. Um, it's important to know what filter is on your car beforehand because if you have just one of these it may not fit the filter that's already on your car if you've never done this before. Um, this this OEM cap wrench I know it fits like fram filters for this car and this uh, CTA tool it fits uh, like Bosch and uh, Purolator filters. So I mean depending on the brand the filter you have it uh, you might need either one of these or if you're going to switch a filter type you, you'll, you might need both because um, it can be really hard to get the oil filter off since it's in such a tight spot you may need a 14 millimeter aluminum crush washer in case yours is old and worn out you might want to have to replace that uh, a wrench, 3 8 drive to fit your uh, socket cap. A uh, 17 millimeter wrench, that's to break loose the uh, oil drain plug. A torque wrench, uh, you want to torque the oil drain bolt to 33 pound feet. So if you can borrow one of these, or if you have one, even better, it's going to be the same 17 millimeter size. A oil drain pan. Um, this is the kind I like to use, the one that doesn't have an open top, it has a drain in it. Uh, this helps to prevent oil spills. Um, make sure you have one that's large enough to fit uh, all the oil you're going to be draining out. Uh, a note about the oil, you'll need four quarts of the oil, so anything larger than that should be fine with the oil drain pan and then you'll need some jack stands and a hydraulic jack to be able to lift your car off the ground and get under there to work on it. Before getting started on this project you'll want to drive your car around for maybe 20, 20 minutes to get the engine warmed up and the oil warmed up and then after that you can uh, check the oil level. It's important to know where your oil level is before you start so that between oil changes you can monitor any uh, loss of oil either through leaking or uh, any oil being burned in the motor. I've already wiped the dipstick off. The engine's been sitting a few minutes and check the oil level and it should be between those two dots that are in the dipstick you can see my oil is topped off. Next thing we are going to do is uh, lift the car off the ground. Be sure to support the car with jack stands and lift the car with a hydraulic jack. Never work under a car without the jack stand supporting the car. In the center, near the center of the car, towards the front, you have this lift point right here. That's where you can place your jack and when you place the head of the jack under this point, make sure it's centered 
and when you're lifting off this point slowly lift the vehicle make sure that it's actually centered and that your car is not going to slip off your jack when placing your jack stands underneath the sides of the car the uh, jack the lift point is right here just behind the front wheels and behind the mud guard here it's this piece of metal that extends below the body and that's where you want to place your jack stands on both sides of the vehicle Now that you have your car safely off the ground, you have to get the uh, oil pan ready to collect the oil. If you have a cap on your oil pan, remove that and put it out of the way. And if you have an air vent, make sure you open this up. Once under the car, you'll be able to see the oil pan for the motor and the oil drain plug. The uh, oil pan on this car is near the exhaust manifold and you want to stay away from this area because it's really hot so try to avoid touching that or else you might get burned the uh, drain plug is a 17 millimeter but uh, before you loosen that if this area is covered in grime and gook you'll want to wipe it down with a clean rag to get, ready, get rid of any of that stuff before uh, you drain the oil it's easy, easiest to do it now That will help prevent getting anything in there when you reinstall the drain plug, any dirt. And after doing that, you can use your 17mm wrench to crack the drain plug loose. Have your oil pan handy and ready. There it goes. So now it's cracked loose. We can put position the oil pan to catch the oil. And now what we're going to do is slowly turn this bolt out by hand. But to prevent uh, getting oil all over our hands, we're going to turn it and press it in to the oil pan. And you're going to keep doing that until you feel the bolt is loose and then you can quickly pull it away and out of the way of the oil stream that's going to come out and if you get this a lot of practice with this technique you can actually prevent uh, getting oil hot oil all over your hands uh, it's also a good idea to wear a glove because um, it'll help you from get, keep from getting burned and it'll help keep the dirty oil off your hands because used oil does have uh, toxins in it so you want to limit your exposure to it As the oil is draining, make sure to keep an eye on your oil pan position. You may have to adjust it as the uh, stream lessens and also if the wind is blowing it'll tend to push your stream around so you might want to stay under here while the oil is draining to uh, prevent any spills. After your oil is drained and you're ready to put your plug back in, before you replace the plug, make sure to wipe the uh, plug clean along with the threads 
and inspect your uh, drain plug crush washer. On this car there's a 14 millimeter aluminum crush washer here. It's uh, the original that came with the plug. And these, these crush washers you can reuse them quite a few times. But if your washer starts to get mushroomed out or you have leaks going on then it would be a good time to replace it. It's always a good idea to have these spares on hand for when you need them and they are available from the dealer along with uh, other auto parts stores. So our oil is finished draining. We just got a slight drip here. Before we reinstall the plug I'm just going to give it a wipe here with the rag. Get that excess oil out of there. And then reinstall the drain plug by hand. Be sure to thread this in all the way down by hand. You don't want to cross thread this and damage your threads. To torque the drain bolt down, I am going to use a torque wrench. The spec on this drain bolt is 33 pound feet. Um, if you're going to do this by hand, you don't want to leave the drain plug loose because then you risk, uh, you know, the plug coming out and losing all the oil from your motor, and uh, that would completely destroy your motor if you're driving down the road. And by the same token, you don't want to tighten the drain plug so much that you uh, completely destroy the threads in the uh, pan because then. Uh, your drain plug won't uh, even tighten down anymore or seal and you'll be leaking oil so either one is a problem um, so I'd recommend if you can borrow a torque wrench or from a friend or from a shop from an auto parts store this is always your best bet So now that your drain plug is tightened down, you can go ahead and remove the filter. The filter is located in a very cramped spot just above this area, up here behind the block of the motor. It's that white cap you see there in the middle of the frame. Um, because this oil filter is very hard to reach, it's surrounded by the intake manifold bracket the axle, the um, bearing here. Um, it's best to use a tool on this uh, oil filter to both uh, loosen and tighten it down because unless you have really small hands you're not going to be getting your hands wrapped around that filter very well. Okay since the oil filter is such an, in such a tight spot I'm not going to be able to film exactly what I'm doing so I'm going to show you outside the car. Um, the oil filter cap wrench it fits over the end of the uh, filter here so you simply use your 3 8 drive ratchet put it into the end here and then you'll be able to wrench the filter off. When you break the filter loose and you can start to turn it by hand go ahead and do that and you'll want to uh, Make sure, just like the drain plug, you hold the uh, filter against the, the, the block of the motor because this oil filter is going to be filled with oil. Be sure to have your oil pan under the car as well, directly under uh, where this filter is located. Don't uh, hang around under this filter because you'll get a bunch of oil on you once it starts leaking out. So you'll want to unscrew the filter and then when you feel it come loose keep pressure on the filter and then quickly and swiftly pull the filter away and immediately turn it up like this the filter is going to act like a cup and it's going to hold all the oil inside there if you pull the filter away and just leave it sideways like this all the oil is going to end up spilling out right here 
and it's going to get all over you and uh, possibly all over the floor too if you're not careful. After you've removed your oil filter, you'll be able to see the uh, surface where the oil filter meets the block. That uh, outer circular surface, you'll want to wipe it down with a clean rag to get any uh, grime out of that area. Just on the outer surface, don't worry about the inner surface, it should already be clean. I mean, that's where all your oil flows through. Okay, to prepare your oil filter for installation, one thing I like to do is use a permanent marker and label the oil filter with the date and the mileage of my oil change. And after that, we have to put a little bit of oil around this uh, seal here. Um, so just get a little bit of new oil on your finger. It doesn't take much. Just put your finger in there, get some oil, and uh, wipe it on this surface here this will help to prevent uh, this this rubber seal from getting stuck on your uh, block when it comes to remove the oil filter again for the next oil change so just put a little bit of oil on there and after you've done that what I like to do is uh, fill the oil filter with some oil as well um, this is optional. Some people don't do this. I like to do it. Uh, what I try, what I do is a uh, fill, pour oil into here about half ways, and then I take the filter and then rotate it like this around just by hand sideways to get that oil to soak into the filter, the media that's inside there, and then I'll turn it up. And if there's a uh, still room for more oil, I'll fill it half ways again and then do it again and uh, that will help to uh, load the filter with oil for when it comes time to start the motor up. Um, you don't have to worry about the, as long as you don't overfill it, you don't have to worry about oil pouring out because uh, it oil will not pour out of these smaller holes so you can uh, have oil filled up to this about this level have it sideways and not have anything come out so after you have the air oil filter ready to go loaded up with oil I'm going to install it by hand here um, you uh, line it up with the uh, stud coming out of the block and spin it on by hand and you can see it freely spins so you're just going to keep spinning it until it stops okay so there it stops spinning freely so after the oil filter has contacted the block what I like to do is place a uh, mark with my permanent marker at 6 o'clock on the oil filter. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And with that mark there in place, it helps me to know how far I turn the oil filter after it's contacted the block. So I'm going to grab my uh, oil cap socket and then uh, I'm going to rotate the uh, oil filter um, three quarters of a turn uh, past where it is right now. So at that point, the uh, mark I've made will be at about three o'clock. And that way, I know that the oil filter has been tightened sufficiently.
Okay, so I've rotated my uh, oil filter now and my mark is about 2 o'clock and that's uh, tight enough really so I'm just going to leave it at that and now that that's done we can go ahead and wipe down any oil that's left on these surfaces from where oil spilled and we can lower our car now to the ground and be ready to fill the oil back up one last thing while you're under here and before you lower the car is a good time to check around for any uh, problems you might want to look for any oil leaks that you may have or torn boots on the uh, CV axles the CV axles are right there the boots um, you know just take a look around look for any problem areas and uh, because there's no better time to look for problems than while you're under here. Um, one thing I did notice while being under the car is I have a leaky CV boot here and there's some grease there leaking out of this inner joint. Now that our car is back on the ground, we can uh, fill the motor back up with oil. Um, get the oil filter cap off, just screw it. Um, get a clean funnel, put it there. And we can um, fill the motor with brand new oil. Um, with this particular motor, I like to put uh, about uh, three quarts in and then check the oil level, see where it's at. Whenever you've uh, put oil in your engine, give it a minute or two so that the oil can flow down to the oil pan between uh, checking the uh, oil level and putting oil in. My oil level seems to be topped off now. I'm going to put the uh, cap on and run the engine for a minute, shut it off, wait a minute or two and check the oil level again. And depending on the oil level, I may have to add a little bit more just to get it topped off. So after running the motor and uh, letting the oil settle to the oil pan, I uh, checked the oil again and I had to add a little bit more to get it topped off. So the total oil I added was about 4 quarts. After you finish with the oil change on your car, it comes for the time for the cleanup. Uh, what I like to do is put the oil filter in a smaller fil the oil container like this. Uh, I let it sit on this container to drain because this is going to continue to drain for a while. It's slow to get the oil out. So just take this and put it like that. And uh, with this larger oil container, I drain it out into a empty uh, oil container, the same one that it comes in. And uh, I use a funnel and uh, pour that used oil in here and then uh, take it to a used oil recycle center to get rid of it. It's always nice to work over one of these uh, oil pans here, this sheet metal 
uh, to contain any spills in case you do spill it you don't get it all over your floor here and then have to clean that up you just easily wipe off this uh, sheet metal so that's always nice to have and with the oil filter um, I usually put them in a ziploc bag and take them along with the oil to get uh, recycled The last note I have about doing your own oil change is to make sure to look under the car for any oil leaks, uh, make sure it's not leaking, and other than that, that's all there is to changing the oil on your 94 to 01 Acura Integra with a non-VTEC motor.